data is generated by most every interaction we have in every location, whether at home, at work, in store, shopping online, and at your local restaurant. Every person will contribute to an endless amount of data generated by their computer, tablet, phone, watch, embedded sensors, credit card, and technology we have yet to invent. Until recently, we didn't appreciate the power of this seemingly random and unrelated data. Information was stored in many places, not connected, and rarely reviewed. Today, we are beginning to build the necessary skills and solutions to gather, mine, and connect big data. Success in a big data economy requires business, no matter the industry or size, to harness a commodity such as big data and create timely and actionable insights to quickly respond to customers, lessen risk while taking risk, and boost market share and profits. At Datastax, we have focused on enabling big data applications and transforming business since the very beginning of the big data movement. For Datastax customers, big data no longer consists of unconnected and random bits of information. It is the platform that powers the next generation of applications used to leverage connections, relationships, and preferences, providing the ability to change a customer's experience in real time. The companies that put brilliant minds to work, the ones that know the most about their customers and can make each customer feel like their company is built just for them, these are the businesses poised for success. At Datastax, this is what we think about all the time. We build the big data platform so you don't have to. You can focus your energies on putting big data to work for you, so you can win your market. Did we make the five minute cutoff? Yeah, okay, that was that good? 2.45, all right. It just seems like forever. You know what was funny is the guy that was, had the little hand cart, that was full of beer. <laughs> that, that's actually true. Um, <laughs> no one knows that, but you do. Keep it to yourself. All right, so we're going to do lightning talks. And OK, we're not doing lightning talk. <laughs> Can you switch to the? There we go. There we go. Hey. Hey. OK, so first one up. You ready? You have five minutes, or you're getting pulled up. Go. OK. Hi, guys. I am Antonio Alcocer for the company Stratio in Spain. Today, we come here to talk about in-memory persist with Cassandra persist. Hold on, hold, hold on. on. We'll let you go again. <laughs> Time out. We, we can restart this. My photo. My photo's like. He's hanging out on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like an Apple app to make it all he wants, show off. wants all the attention. You get your full five minutes back. Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you get to hit right. Oh. Here, I'll hold it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ready? Can you put it back on the big screen, Greg? <laughs> now that we've had beer talk. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> We talk about in-memory shared with Cassandra persistence. This means uh, a shared, uh, shared tools with Core with Cassandra persist. Uh, someone might ask, why? Why for? The solution are born from the problems. And we had a problem. We had 200 
We had 200 million of documents, nearly 20 terabytes of data. And we need to do full test searches in these in this documents and saving time. Our first objective was to make uh, batch processing using a um, reduced tax, but we were overhead by the result. At this moment, we thought, okay, no problem. We, we, can, in, we can index our information and search in this index and improve for search time. Uh, we, we tried to do this index using a much reduced process, but our servers are still suffering. Uh, we, we knew our, our problem, and then we need to resolve it. We did start with our requirements. We, need, we needed a database where we, we, we save our information. Obviously, we choose Cassandra. Why? It's necessary to explain here. The other, the other choice was a little harder. We need to index tools. In the marker, there were some, for example, Solar or Elasticsearch, but most of them is based in Lucene. That's its own other choice. And we need them to, to, to work together. Okay, let's try. But before, to, before we work, we ask it ourselves. Has somebody had tried, had the same problem? Has somebody tried uh, this before us? Could we using something? We found several proposals. It was true. So somebody has somebody tried it. Some of them made it. But there was there, there were something we didn't like. We, we knew their problems. We knew the way the other guys uh, had tried. We knew some of their mistakes. And we made the decision to do, to do it ourselves. We integrated Lucene with Cassandra. And to be faster, we saved our index in, a in an distributed memory using InfiniSpan. The, the data coming in the system from Lucene. Lucene process the data and extract the index. This index is saved in this, in, this index is in, in InfiniSpan and the raw data is stored in Cassandra. In this benchmark, we can check, we improve the search times uh, that the Lucene, tra the traditional Lucene option. We, you can see, we are six times faster than the traditional Lucene. Also, we have our information distributed with Cassandra, and our index is replicated using InfiniSpan. And we also, and we, and we also have a, a strong, have, <coughs> excuse me, have a strong uh, assistant strong for tolerance. A result of these solutions, Statio, Statio Shares is born. Statio Shares is a cornerstone or platform, a Statio pl integration platform. This, pl this platform, as you can see, is focusing in Cassandra. And we are developing a streaming process, uh, but analytics and full test search. And to join this, we use a Okay, we we using a state communication. Thank you very much for your attention. Hold on, who's next here? Achilles. Who's who's Achilles? Yeah. All right, get up there. You got four minutes now. Good luck. Oh, no, come on. You can have six. Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to show you how to be more effective in uh, Cassandra development with Achilles. So, to introduce myself, my name is Yu Haidoan. I'm a freelance developer, currently working on a Libon project for the Orange Group. I'm a Cassandra passionate and creator of Achilles. So, why Achilles? It is not yet another open source persistent manager. Five months ago, I was kind of frustrated because I was looking for some, something that I cannot find 
something that sits on top of the data stacks Java driver car, which offer me all the SQL tree feature have advanced entity mapping. And that's why I wrote Achilles. And uh, I want to put the focus on, um, on developers. We want you to focus more on data modeling, more on functional uh, requirements, and less on technical plumbing. It should be delegated to the framework. And last but not least, um, Achilles has a complete documentation plus a Twitter demo as an advanced tutorial. So uh, for entity mapping, we support all kind of almost everything. Compound primary keys, composite partition keys, you can have time UID, enum support, consistency, uh, uh, level defined uh, statically, and so on. Just have a look at the doc. Uh, the persistent manager is stateless, so you can use a synchronous, uh, and so it's uh, thread safe. You have common method to access data, lots of configuration parameters, and we offer a tight spring integration, so you, you have factory bin to create the persistent manager, but if you hate XML config, you have also some sample Java config classes. And a neat slide query DSL, so to do a slide query, you provide partition key from clustering to clustering, set the ordering, the bounding, and then you have the results. If you want to craft manually your SQL statement, you can do type query. In that case, Achilles will play as a data mapper, a plain data mapper for you. If you want to use native SQL function, you can uh, rely on the native uh, query support. So it's quite straightforward. Uh, for special um, Cassandra feature support, um, Achilles support uh, all the distributed counters natively through an API. You can, uh, with the option builder, provide consistency level, TTN and timestamp at runtime, okay? Now, as a Java developer, I spend lots of my time writing JUnit tests, okay? And I would love to have something, some rule, that start an embedded Cassandra server for me, bootstrap the framework, and between each test, truncate the tables, so my tests will be repeatable. And now, oh, No, so come on, sir? come on, come on. Or, oh, it's back. And this work out of the box. But that's not all. If you want to dig into detail, you can activate debug logging. So you can have DDL statement and prepare statement with bound values. So uh, you can understand what is done under the hood by Achilles. Roadmap for future, we are planning to support secondary index, a small support, uh, bin validation, because it's uh, useful. Some DL template a la Spring Data. And of course, we will support all the new Cassandra 2.0 feature which are coming very soon. Thank you, and uh, you can follow the project here or most easily follow the hashtag Achilles so you can see all the release uh, announcements. That's all. Wow, in like five minutes, you had one of the cooler talks all day. That is really cool. I'm going to be telling a lot of people about that. All right. Cassandra Dudu, is that you? Yes. All right. Way, way to make the TTs cooler. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you had a longer talk and it was cooler, I'm going to let you who you are, but that was cool. Come on, give us a hand. That was a good one. Come on. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dmitry Mezhinsky. I am developer at Mirant's company, and I'd like to share our um, uh, experience with uh, building analytics uh, using Hadoop uh, on Cassandra. So today we'd like to discuss analytics uh, approach and scalability approach uh, of solution. Uh, uh, the, uh, several issues uh, which were faced uh, that uh, statistics, uh, we have mo uh, many statistics, uh, uh, top end statistics, time zero statistics, uh, average median values and fraud analysis based on uh, min max value which we have already calculated. Uh, so what, what we have implemented? 
uh, uh, top end statistics uh, we use uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, read data from database uh, uh, as um, uh, the result of map phase uh, is uh, uh, number of entities and uh, uh, entity type. Uh, the reduced phase uh, reduces uh, uh, the uh, values and on storing statistics uh, we get uh, entity types and uh, values. Uh, Comparated uh, uh, in descending order. Uh, so persisting uh, and, and, and entities and querying them in descending order will get uh, 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 top and entities. Uh, for time series we used uh, our compos uh, composite index, custom composite index, uh, which uh, gives us needed uh, uh, ability to make uh, custom queries. Uh, so that we can uh, make uh, queries uh, in time r uh, in a specified time range, and uh, fraud analysis is built on the top of time series. We analyze uh, uh, strange behavior uh, by using uh, well-known uh, big data algorithms. Uh, so about the scalability of whole approach, uh, Cassandra has linear scalability uh, such as Hadoop and uh, there is no bottleneck in this approach. So that's all. Do you have any questions? If you do, you've got two minutes for questions. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe at the evening function if people have questions you can... Um, all right. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs>
and uh, stuff for the um, Active Directory integration for the, with the Kerberos. And also, since quite recently, we're a partner of DataStacks in Poland, so we want to enable and evangelize uh, for the Cassandra in, uh, in, in, our, in our region. Uh, so, one of our projects that we are delivering also for the, for the customers, so we are also a Cassandra user uh, in, in this case, is a scalable semantic uh, knowledge management system with, uh, which is powered by Cassandra and uh, run in the cloud in the Windows Azure. Uh, actually, this, uh, this particular project can be run both on Windows Server machines and uh, Linux. Uh, it combines several uh, w semantic web um, standards like OWL, and, uh, Description Logic Profile, SparkQL for acquiring uh, RDF uh, in, in the bottom of, of the project and uh, Natural Language Interface. Uh, the challenge here is to manage the huge repositories that can be accessed by uh, uh, high traffic, a lot of users, and can be propelled with the big inputs. Uh, what, what we get uh, as a benefit by using Cassandra is much easier and, and faster searching capabilities out of, the, uh, out of this uh, um, solution, uh, much easier and faster data modeling. We have the high performance, uh, whole reliability for the, for the whole system, and uh, last but not least, lower data maintenance cost. So basically, for the five minutes, I believe this is, this is it. Thank you very much. I hate that warning. Does it really mean anything? I don't know if the, I think all your data just got sucked out. You're, you're not gonna have anything left. I, you know, there's actually a, there's an app that you can get that will just turn this warning off completely. Actually, it's so funny. Actually, on Windows, I'm doing, doing this all the time. It's never <laughs> you didn't get a blue screen of death? Oh, good. All right. All right, great. OK. You, got, you want your phone? OK, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> D don't unplug it too fast. It might crash the computer. All right. <laughs> Did anyone else leave anything up here? <laughs> all right, good. Uh, OK, so that was it for the lightning talks. And I have to congratulate everybody. There was real lightning. That was two and a half minutes, okay? <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for all our lightning talk speakers. <laughs>
Okay, so tomorrow, uh, just a little housekeeping. Tomorrow we're going to be doing more workshops, and so uh, if you're uh, if you're involved in that, we're going to be starting same time. Uh, was it eight eight o'clock in the morning? Is when we start that? It's really come eight, come, come, come at eight o'clock. Yeah, it's a little early. I know it's like not nerd time. You realize that, right? Ten is good. I maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, it's eight o'clock. What do you want, Aaron? You're on at nine. Okay, so you get to sleep in an hour. Good. All right. <laughs> or for me, I get to wake up later. <laughs> so, all right, that's cool. Uh, we're going to have a reception after this on level three. Uh, so come on down. Don't take off just yet. Plus, you don't want to get on the underground right now. It's really messy. So it's, it, just stay. Um, so we're going to do our Rebel Elite. And so this program, we used to call it MVP. We've, we've changed the name, as, as Christian said. But this is really about recognition. And it's peer-to-peer. -peer. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad joke. <laughs> but it's a peer recognition. It's nothing that uh, you know, a secret committee comes up with. Um, it's not me dreaming up these names. These are uh, voted on by people in the community. And what we're looking for are people who go beyond just normal, uh, just normal everyday user interaction, where they're pushing the envelope, so to speak, in community. And that's what really makes this community great. And not only that, this year, um, we, a lot of people are expected at the summit in San Francisco. We didn't do it there. We're doing it here this year. But we've increased the count on how many people have been nominated and the amount of votes that were happening. Were, it was just staggering because there's really a lot of people helping out IRC, mailing lists, doing meetups, uh, projects, programs. It's just all kinds of ecosystem around Cassandra. So we want to make sure and recognize those people. So I'm going to invite up a few people. Oh, you have a slide? Oh, did I? I probably put it up like three times, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on my desktop also. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you, I don't want to touch your desktop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Dude. So, Patrick, nine, we have 30 in total, nine are here. Yeah, so, yeah. We nine. 30, we have 30 Rebel Elite. So, the Rebel Elite thing is all about, uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, and if you don't, you should, um, but... I, I talk a lot about the rebel forces, and that was one of the things we brought at the last summit in San Francisco, is this rebels. And let me explain that a little bit. <laughs> the reason I say that all the time is because a lot of people that start with Cassandra usually are doing it against the grain. If you're in a shop that's using Oracle or SQL Server or Postgres or MySQL, you're probably, everyone's pretty happy with that. And when you bring in uh, Cassandra and you say, you know what, I want to do things differently, you're probably getting a little bit of ridicule. And if not, you're going to work in a great place. But I know I got it. Like, why would you bring that in here? No, Oracle works great. We love paying money to Larry Ellison. Why would you do this to us? And then what happens is you figure out that it really did work, you know, and then everybody says, well, OK, maybe that did work. And before you know it, you have production systems running Cassandra. And you are that rebel elite that we're looking for, or the rebels. You, you made a decision, and you're fighting that fight. And we want to help you. So. The rebel elite are these people out there helping. And the, li the people you see up here, these are people that were all voted on by the community. And we have nine people here. So why don't you guys come up here? Um, Eric Zoner, where are you? Come on up. <laughs> Gorla, sorry. Patricia Gorla, come on up. <laughs> Matt Kennedy, you come up, why don't you come on up here? Right up here. Okay. Yeah. Keep Come on, keep going. Uh, Theo Holtberg. Dave Gardner. Come on, where are you, dude? Right there. Oh, whoa. You're, are you up on the platform? Oh, he's circus tall. Richard Lowe. Aaron Morton. And Mick. Come on up, man. <laughs> All right, Mick Weaver. These are our rebel elite that we have here. We have a gift for you, of course, because you are the elite. And uh, Brady, do you have that? Why don't you yeah. hand these out? So what, what we did this year is, um, this is really nerdy, but cool. I wish I was an elite now. <laughs> these, are, uh, these are Raspberry Pi developer kits, like full bore. And the reason we're going with the Raspberry Pi, uh, <laughs> Andy Cobley, where are you? You raise your hand. He's teaching an entire college course on Cassandra running on Raspberry Pi. So if you need to know how to get Cassandra <laughs> running on that thing, he can show you, OK? <laughs> so thank you very much for being who you are and uh, everything you do for the community.
All right, one more thing before we go, because we don't want everyone to leave empty-handed, right? This is like Oprah, right? You get a car, you get a car. <laughs> that joke isn't as big here, right? <laughs> okay, so when you're walking out, what we have for you is a little gift for you to take home, and that's Cassandra, right? So um, Al, come on up. Al has been working tirelessly on what we're trying to do is give you an experience of Cassandra that is really portable and complete. So what Al has done, you want to tell them what you did? What's yeah. on there? So it's a USB drive, uh, four gig USB drive. It's got a Linux VM on it, a VM DK. Uh, you should be able to, if you have VMware Player, just double click it and it should start copy over and start right up. Um, and Cassandra, it boots up and it starts Cassandra and you can connect to it from um, Dev Center or whatever client you like to use. It'll actually print on the screen in the VM the connection details that you need and that's it. If you are, have a Mac and you're using VirtualBox, there's a little extra work to do, um, but uh, we'll post some more on the blog pretty soon on how to do that if you get stuck. Uh, we just figured that out today, but enjoy. Uh, Dev Center is on there as well. There should be Mac OS 64-bit, uh, Windows 32-bit, and Windows 64-bit in the Dev Center directory. When you get started, plug it in. There's a start here.html file. Double click that, and that'll get you started. There are videos of some of Patrick's talks. Three of them three of them, and um, one other one, I forget what it was, and PDF, PDF docs uh, for... Give some slides for my last vacation, just in case, you know. <laughs> and, and PDF docs for Cassandra, so you should have everything you need to start developing with Cassandra without having to mess around with anything else. All right, so what I would ask, you guys are the beta testers, you are the first wave on this community. We want feedback, because what we're gonna try to do with this is give this, when we go to meetups, when we're talking to people about, hey, you wanna try Cassandra? Here it is, go and use it. We want your feedback. We want to create a really easy to use experience for newcomers to Cassandra. So if you have something you wanna talk, you know, like, hey, you got some ideas about it, or you, did, you have some feedback, it didn't work, it's gonna work though. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. If you have any feedback, just let us know. You know, this is a true community. We want feedback and we want to hear good feedback, good or bad, and um, let us know. What, All right. Where should they let us know? Where should they let us know? Oh, God, am I going to give them money? <laughs> where you, should we send that? Me? No, just info at Planet Cassandra. Info at Planet Cassandra. There you go. That'll get to me and Patrick. And yeah. I was going to give you my email address, but then I shuddered. <laughs> <laughs> you probably all know my email address anyway. Anyway, so um, last announcement, because we like giving away stuff. We have, uh, we have four vendors down in the, in the expo area that are doing a raffle during the reception, so you still have a chance to get more stuff. So let's go down. Let's do that. Thank you very much. It's a wrap. See you next year. See you next year.